Okay, hi. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, so today I will talk about low rank matrix factorization, especially in the setting where you have missing data. A low rank factorization offers a compact representation of the matrix, where you can express it as a product of two thin factors. There are many applications in computer vision, such as affine structure for motion, both in the rigid and non-rigid setting, as well as photometric stereo and many others. The rank constraint allows us to estimate missing or unobserved entries of the matrix. This is typically performed using local optimization directly on the bilinear factorization. There are also convex relaxation approaches using the nuclear norm, which can work well in some settings. In this paper, we are mostly interested in the case when the matrix contains point trajectories. So for example, in non-rigid structure for motion. In this setting, the, when you have more complex scenes, you will require a higher rank to model it. This can be, for example, if you have multiple motions in your scene, or if you have articulated motion or other non-rigid deformations. However, as you start increasing your rank, you will start overfitting parts of the matrix which are less complex. I will show a small example highlighting what I mean. Uh, so here, the blue points are observed in the current frame, and the red points are recovered using a rank constraint. So while some red points are correctly recovered, others uh, are under constraint and start flying around. So while you can try to tune your rank to get a better recovery for the missing trajectories, the rank is sort of a low resolution parameter, and it's not always possible to find the rank for which every tra trajectory is, uh, has a good reconstruction. So to avoid this type of overparameterization, we propose to use additional rank constraints on submatrices. So we assume that we can partition our columns such that each partition has a lower rank than the entire matrix. The idea is that the rank constraint on the entire matrix will capture sort of the global interactions between the columns, while the smaller rank constraints will avoid this overparameterization. So for the rank constraint on the entire matrix to pose any additional constraints, we need that the rank is smaller than the sum of the ranks of the blocks. Uh, this, of course, means that we will have some dependencies between the clusters. And we will see later why this can be useful. So this additional constraint is essentially a union of subspace constraints. In this model, we typically assume that the data comes from a set of independent subspaces. And it is commonly used for problems such as motion segmentation or other subspace clustering applications. Uh, and the goal for these methods are typically to obtain the clustering. In contrast, we don't really care about the clustering. We only want to use this as sort of extra constraints to regularize the problem of fitting low rank matrices. So the model we propose can be seen as a combination of uh, traditional low rank matrix factorization with this union of subspace model. So in low rank factorization, we fit a single subspace to all of our data. And in the union of subspace, we partition our data and fit local subspaces to each partition. Uh, so in our case, we still fit a single subspace, but within that subspace, we fit multiple small subspaces to each partition. So in this example, the three lines would be required to lie in a single shared plane. OK, so this model admits a trilinear factorization. This is essentially a low rank factorization where we have further factorized one of the factors blockwise. So the leftmost matrix B uh, is a basis for the shared subspace, while the matrices UK selects a smaller dimensional subspace from the span of B. And then, of course, the matrices CK are the coefficients in that smaller subspace. So once we have the factorization, we can compute the degrees of freedom for the different models. Uh, and it is easy, easy to show that under some mild assumptions, the unified model will have fewer degrees of freedom uh, than both the global and local models. This is not very surprising, however, since it's a more constrained version of either of them. OK, so now I'll show a small example highlighting the benefits uh, of this, uh, these additional constraints when we try to recover missing entries. So here we have a short sequence of two hands flexing where we have tracked some points and we have partitioned the trajectories into the different parts of the hand. 
So here again, the blue points are observed in the current frame, and the red points are recovered uh, using the rank constraints. So in the top right, we show what happens when we fit a single low rank matrix to the data. We see directly that some trajectories are under constrained and start flying around. In the lower left, we see we show what happens when we fit low rank matrices independently to each cluster. Uh, and here, towards the end of the sequence, there are fewer observations on the right thumb um, here. Uh, and since each cluster is fit independently, the reconstruction quality deteriorates greatly. While we can see that when we have both types of constraints uh, in the lower right, we get a much nicer reconstruction. OK. So of course, the, this model still gives us a low rank factorization, which we can use for whatever application we need a low rank factorization for. So for example, we can extract the shape basis and hallucinate new scene. So here, the red points are recovered from the position of the five blue points. What is interesting to note is that the shape basis is still a locally low rank, uh, which you can sort of see in this video. OK, so how do we perform model fitting? We propose to use a Perl-style optimization scheme, where we try to optimize the trade-off between model fit measured in L2 loss and model complexity measured in degrees of freedom. We assume only that the global rank of the matrix is known, and we try to optimize over everything else. Uh, so the number of clusters, uh, as well as the dimension of the clusters. So this is, of course, a very difficult problem. Uh, so to do this, we iterate the following steps. We perform local optimization uh, with fixed clustering directly on the trilinear factorization. Then using our current estimates, we fill in the missing entries of the data matrix. And from the filled in data matrix, we sample uh, columns to generate new subspace proposals. So remember, the matrices U were the one which selected the subspace from B. Uh, and finally, we perform alpha expansion steps to assign our columns to subspaces. In the final step, when we do the alpha expansion, we directly optimize the trade-off between the data fit and the degrees of freedom of the resulting factorization. This can be neatly encoded using only a unary term and a label cost term. So sort of as a sanity check for our optimization, we did an experiment where we looked at the effects of the trade-off parameter called lambda. So we took some sequences from the CMU motion capture data set and generated synthetic missing data patterns where we tried to simulate tracking failure. So for each trajectory, we randomly dropped it after some frame. Uh, and in the lower left graph, we show the error on the observed data as we change lambda. Uh, so a higher value of lambda means a larger penalty on model complexity. And in the right, we, saw, we show the degrees of freedom of the resulting factorization. In the center graph, we show the error on the missing entries, so how well we were able to recover the occluded parts. And we see that when we have a good trade-off between model complexity and model fit, we get, we get the best reconstruction, which seemed promising. So then we did some more quantitative evaluations where we compared our method to different methods of uh, fitting low rank matrices, as well as trying to do some uh, clustering on the columns followed by fitting low rank matrices to each cluster. Uh, so we took some sequences from the Hopkins uh, data set and from more sequences from the CMU motion capture data set. And the graphs show the fraction of residuals less than some threshold, so you want to be at top left. Uh, and for these data sets, our method performed very well. We also did experiments where we used uniformly missing data. Uh, in this setting, the problem becomes really simple. And you can do almost anything, and it works fine. So this is not so interesting. Finally, we tried to simulate large occlusion. So one of the ideas was that the global rank constraint would allow us to handle occlusion very well. Uh, so we took some uh, the similar missing data patterns as before, but we in the last 25% of the frames, we occluded half of the image. Uh, so here we see the results on, on three sequences. We see that the global and unified model work, work very well here, as we expected. But of course, when we try to fit uh, local models, once a cluster is completely occluded, it is no longer possible to recover it. 
Here we also see some examples of the clusterings we obtained. So if we measure the error on the missing data here, we see that we get the best reconstruction, while of course having a higher error on the observed data, since we're fitting a more constrained model. Here we also see an example of the missing data pattern used. So as you could see in the previous example, the labelings we obtained were quite noisy. Uh, so we did some experiments where we added pairwise terms to the energy, promoting a more smooth labelings. The expansion steps will still be submodular, so it's still easy to optimize. However, we need to choose some neighborhood structure. For this, we just took the maximum distance between the observed entries and took the neighborhoods from there. Um, so here we can see the results. So we can see that we can get sort of nicer looking labelings. However, the uh, uh, reconstruction performance did not improve with this and was actually slightly worse for these three sequences. Okay, so in conclusion, we have presented a framework for compact matrix factorization. The idea was to avoid the overparametrization, which can sometimes happen when you estimate low rank matrices from uh, partial observations. So the idea was then to add uh, additional union of subspace constraints to regularize the problem. Uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs>